Hi guys, um, so I'm just filming because I have to go to work in like half an hour, but I want to do something with my hair because it's looking kind of, I mean, I know that I'm pretty lucky when it comes to hair, but I'm finicky about it, just like anyone else. Um, so I thought I'd just have a chat with you. I don't know, while I'm doing my hair, I don't know what I'm going to do to it, but, um, I like making good old-fashioned vlogs, so that's what I'm gonna do. I've been liking wearing false eyelashes lately. I don't know if you can, like, see them. There are Dell lashes, and I do not know, uh, what number they are. Reuse these, like, three times. You can reuse your false eyelashes a lot if you take good care of them, which I do. The reason why I've been wearing them is because my natural um, eyelashes have been kind of sparse lately. Your eyelashes go through um, growth periods. Every three weeks a few of them will shed or something like that. Um, I'm doing a herringbone braid by the way, so just in case you don't know how to do it, this is kind of turning into a tutorial. You take two sections of hair. I'm doing a French herringbone. And then you take another section, you pass it over that one and put it over here. Voila! And just repeat that step over and over and over again. It's, to my mind, simpler than a regular braid since it's only two strands that you have to deal with. Um, but for me it takes a little bit longer to do because with a herringbone braid the smaller the sections you take the more dramatic and um, in my opinion, the more beautiful it looks. Anyway, so stuff that I'm obsessed with lately, um, Sherlock Holmes. I love, uh, on, on BBC, it's actually just called Sherlock, but it's a modern day retelling of Sherlock Holmes, and I'm rather late to jump on the bandwagon with this one. Um, but it's just so, so good and so well done, and the writing, everything is so clever, and I, I love the actors who play the characters, it's just, it's great. And it's actually motivated me to read the real stories, because my mom has the completed, the, the whole canon of Sherlock Holmes stories, but um, I've never took the time to read them, oh, boy, uh, he's just some heroin addict who solves mysteries. But no, there's actually, it's, they're so much fun to read. It's like, if, if you like Pretty Little Liars, this is a step up from Pretty Little Liars. Intellectually, I mean. Because I like the Pretty Little Liars show a lot. But Sherlock Holmes is, is, is so so much more it's cleverer much more clever and um, engaging and I love I love the pretty little liar so if you're into that show you should check out Sherlock it's streaming free on Netflix the first season and the second season is available on various websites of ill repute because uh, it's in filmed in England, so it won't be available here on PBS until May. So I couldn't wait that long. And yeah, last week I got really ill, so I just stayed in bed and watched all the episodes. That's the other thing, is that there's only three episodes per season because they're all at, um, 90 minutes long. So it's like watching a film, and they kind of, Mark Gatiss and... Um, Stephen Moffat, who wrote it, they, I think both of them, or one of them, has also written the Doctor Who television series. Um, they said that they wanted it, they, f they write it and film it as if they're making a bunch of movies. So, you know, kind of neat stuff. Uh, when I get obsessed with something, 
I, te I research it extensively, um, very extensively. So when I was sick last week, I was researching Sherlock Holmes, researching the show, um, the stories that the episodes are based on. I just went hog wild. This is why I should be a research assistant. If you need a research assistant at your university in California, call me. Get in touch. I don't care what it is you're researching. I would love to be a part of it because I'm pretty meticulous when it comes to research. Little tip on um, herringbone braids. If you pull it really taut and tight, it will look more um, more dramatic. My arms look so weird. Uh, what else has been going on in my life? Not much, admittedly. Um, I'm kind of a boring homebody kind of a person. So now I'm pulling it over to the side so I can braid it because if you have long hair you know it's it's difficult to braid it down your back I'm just taking, I see I have my two sections, so I'm taking one little piece and swooping it underneath that section. So makeup stuff. I've tried the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Foundation for a while and a couple things. What packaging is an absolute fiasco of gargantuan proportions. I mean, I've had um, the Revlon Color Stay Foundation, which is basically, it doesn't have a pump, and it leaks a little bit, but nothing like that. Um, other things, I think that the color is good, but um, I have the same problem with it as I have with Chanel Pro Lumiere, which is no matter what I do, no matter what primer I use, no matter how much powder I pack on, it doesn't set to my skin, which is odd because I have combination skin. So most of my face is quite dry. It's only on my nose, really, and the size of my nose, I get any significant oiliness. Um, so that frustrates me because I feel like if it's meant for dry skin, it should stay on dry skin. And I really do have dry skin because I use um, Retin-A, which dries your skin out. Um, yeah, so I've gone back to my using my Revlon Color Stay. I have it on today. And it's much more of a matte finish. Um, I'm not used to how kind of heavy it is. Because with the Neutrogena and the Pro Lumiere are slightly lighter coverage. I don't know why I'm getting a prickly heat rash right now. That's kind of odd. But don't be alarmed. It happens all the time. Now, I don't know if it will stay flat against my back or if it will. Yeah, pretty much. So then I just kind of move it over so it's not trending to the side. And then because I have some short layers in the front of my head, whenever I... um do a French braid like this, I kind of have to pin them in place so they don't fall out. And it's just so I can like shape this whole section here on top of my head and make it a little bit more um, a little bit more flattering and stuff. Yeah, I, I don't know why that's happening either. Um, does anyone, does that ever happen to anyone else? You're just sitting around and your skin breaks into a rash? Because that happens to me a lot, but I don't know why. Yep. So, voila! Herringbone braid. Next on my docket of things to learn how to do is do um, a mermaid braid. I tried to do it like twice today and I just got really frustrated because, um, I don't know, it was all zigzaggy. It wasn't in a straight line. So I don't know how to fix that. Hopefully I will. And then 
I've mastered the five strand braid. Five strand braid. So that's going to be like my next hair tutorial, probably. Um, that I film. I kind of want to do a video once a week, maybe twice a week. Uh, it's just, it's so busy. I have work and school and midterms and stuff, and I don't like to film when my roommate is here because it just feels weird. Not that, not because she would be watching me. She sees me do weirder things, like, she came in once and I was bra braiding my hair, like, upside down. Um, she was like, what the heck are you doing? So she's used to my quasi-sociopathic antics, but... <laughs> I just don't want her to feel weird if she's in the background or something. So, um, because we're both kind of introverted people, and so I try to not. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I think you do. Also, we changed the outline, the way our room is like set up. So we pushed the beds back over there. And. There are desks over there. That's my desk. As you can see, it has two coffee cups and it's very messy. Hers is like perfect. <laughs> Anyways, I gotta go to work now, so I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye!